hi this is demand and in this video what we have done we have accessed we have uh, accessed the record of specific object from salesforce using partner wsdl and we have showed them into local server web browser so we have created one web server configured one web server iis express for windows and have created one page using asp.net where we have created another dll file which performs the backend query in salesforce and access this object record this news object so in this news object we have these two fields one is header and is another is content and we have these three records here as you can see so in the header the content is like news heading one heading two and heading three okay and content is as you have seen and now we are we have created this asp.net page asp page aspx and running into this local host server where it's accessing those headings these headings and showing into that page now i'll create another heading here heading 4 and save it and if you try to refresh this page you can see the same will be updated here so it's just running into the local host server asp server and we are accessing the records from salesforce database for that we have used the partner wsdl and this is being done using only dll file and the in backend we have created only the page so if you see the code code of the page is very small and in backend we have created the library so it's a very simple code and we are using here the dll file which is ex which is being used as a library file of number of methods so you might find this video interesting okay so let's start developing it let's see how do we design the this configuration so for that you need to configure some prerequisite uh, functionality so by going to control panel going to program and feature and turn on windows feature on from here here you will see there is one internet information service uh, option so you need to enable this and another is internet information service hostable so you need to enable that one also hostable web code okay and also you need to make sure that dot net framework is up to date latest dot net framework is available you can also configure for previous version also so once it is configured you need to restart the computer and also we are using this visual community 2017 for this development so you can download it from microsoft server microsoft website and another you need to um, another configuration you need to do is the to disable this option enable javascript debugging for asp.net okay chrome and ie so you need to uncheck th that option okay let's start the development How to do so you need to go to file then create new project and here you can see there is option as option as class library and dot net framework framework so it will help to create the dll file so just provide a proper naming convention of the dll file so with this name it will create the dll file with this name okay 
so the project has been created now you need to rename the class now whenever you will be calling this dll file you need to mention the class name as well okay now class has been renamed we are going to create one string variable here as username okay and password as well so whenever we are going to use the partner WSDL to authenticate with the Salesforce will be required username and password now we create one method Salesforce login which will return dictionary so dictionary is nothing but the map in chash.net framework so first one is key and second one is value all right so this will help to store the access token and instance url so access token is nothing but the session id now we create one static as so that later we can call it accordingly okay we just fix the name now it need to be written one value this so we create one variable as login result which is type is dictionary so this will help to store the login access token and instance url so instance url is nothing but the your org instance dot salesforce dot com like cs1 cs2 for product uh, for sandbox and for production it's in a ap or those things okay now we need to add the wsdl of your salesforce org the partner wsdl okay so for that you need to go to project add service reference go to web ref uh, go to advanced then web refer add web reference and here in the url type login.salesforce.com so it, this page will be open and you need to type your org username and password perform the login okay so it will take small time little time and in the setup go to develop then click on api okay so once you click on that you will see this page will open where there are option to generate partner wsdl enterprise wsdl all this okay apex wsdl all this wsdl now once you click on part generate partner wsdl it will open one url here usually it will open there but uh, maybe in 2017 they have modified it so you need to log in again with your org id and password login now ws has been generated now just copy the url this and paste it here okay now you can see that web reference has been captured ws deal has been generated just rename it accordingly and add reference click on button add reference so it will add the web reference partner wsdl 
to your project okay you can see this now what you need to do you need to open this project location into explorer windows explorer okay so for that you need to first save all this project so this will create the project file in your vv workspace visual studio workspace okay so go to that project folder go to web reference folder and here you will find this reference.cs open this into the notepad and try to find this third bracket open and close twice and replace with single okay this just replace with this and save this file otherwise you will get some error okay so it has been saved now so this is the important uh, step you need to understand so just copy that name and click here uh, I mean uh, import that WSDL into your project directory WSDL directory here I mean the reference okay now you need to use your namespace for that here you can see that you are not getting the reference so for that what you need to do you need to use your namespace dot then WSDL okay once you do it you will see that it has been imported successfully and now this S then small force then capital S service class will be available so we are just creating one variable of this class which is from the partner WSDL okay is equal to null so allocating memory for that then we create another variable of type login result so this login result will store the uh, result of that login you are uh, login after after successfully login okay so login result already been defined this variable already been defined previously as well of dictionary type so we just have to modify the name now we create one uh, instance I mean we initialize that variable with this is equal to new login result and new s service okay and now login in login service dot URL is equal to here this is the reference link for this login the the uh, service URL endpoint URL is this so for a past partner API you can see that two URL are different for enterprise WSDL the URL is different and partner WSDL the URL is different so just copy it and use as a login service dot wsd uh, url then we need to add the sorry we need to call the login method of that login service so login method is called by login service dot login method then passing the parameters of username and password all right so we have the username and the password passed into this login method so it will execute the login to Salesforce accordingly and will uh, store the login access token URL session ID all this uh, I mean the access token to this login result so that we can use it 
for any other purpose like query dml operation this session id okay and the login instance url so let's check if it is working fine or not so we used console dot write line and the login session id okay now we need to call this method into the main method for the testing as we have used this for the class uh, class create I mean DLL file creation and the its type is class so we have we cannot use any form for that but we need to create one main method for it okay here so it's simple public static void main then we call this static method here okay so currently we are not returning anything we just trying we are just checking if it is working fine or not now you need to mention this sta thread in within this bracket before the main method okay so it will ex initiate the calling now we need to, for the testing we need to change the project properties uh, output type would be the windows application okay now if we try to start okay we are getting this error so it would be case sensitive main m a capital m okay now if we execute this in the output folder uh, output window we'll see if it is logging successfully then the session id will be printed if it is any wrong then exception will be thrown okay so it's giving on error that salesforce has disabled the tls1.0 so for that we need to use tls1 reference that uh, sorry tls1 above reference into the class so for that salesforce has mentioned into this article that tls 1.0 has been disabled okay now you need if for the dotnet application development you need to use this reference in your code to avoid this error okay so here is the code all these links will be available into the description of this video so you can take a look here this system dotnet service this this code you need to mention that this code okay just copy this code and mention into the into your method okay here so you need to use system.net library for that now if we try to execute it it will connect to salesforce and get the session id it will get the session id if any wrong exception will be thrown here you can see the session id has been obtained successfully okay now let's proceed with the next step we add this session id and instance url to the dictionary and return it as a return variable of this method so login result dot add key and token a uh, key and value so key would be session id okay and value would be instance url uh, sorry next next uh, for this uh, instance url the key would be instance url okay
so we can access the server url here so this is the instance url and we use this login result as a lead return variable and we change the name of the method by this now it's returning the dictionary okay and we save it now we are going to create another method as public list of string which will hold the list of news headings okay so we get the news feed so we call the name this method as get news feed okay so it has to return any value for that now the same we need to access the access token that means session id and instance url so we create one dictionary and uh, we call this sf token uh, sf login method so which will return the login access token and instance url now we create another service export service as query service okay which will perform the query to salesforce and will return the result now this query service will use the same session id which has been obtained after this login so for that we need to add this into the session header value so how do we do that we first create one instance then we use this session header value dot session id is equal to that session id which has been obtained after performing this login okay so we copy this and to obtain the value directly from dictionary we have to use this third bracket and the key name here okay and the same for url we have to use the instance url so which has been obtained after login okay so now in the query service we have added all these um, session id and session variable uh, and login instance url now we create one query result qr which will hold the result of que uh, result of performing query to salesforce using this query service okay so qr is equal to let's let's do one thing change this login service to query service as a name okay so it would be better so query service dot query then query string so we need to create one query string here so string query string variable is equal to select those two fields that news heading and news content these two fields new heading this headline select headlines and then news content from news news object this 
so you need to mm, i mean remember the order of these fields which has been mentioned into the query string because we are not going to use the enterprise wsdl which hold the static method in salesforce we'll perform the dynamic query based on the fields we are accessing so you need to mention that you need to i mean make your query that way so while not done we create one boolean variable done so while not done we create one s object array which will store the records which has been returned after performing performing this query okay so it's a array of s object now we run one for loop where i is equal to 0 i less than records dot count or records dot length i plus plus so for example three records has been returned so it will run this loop three times now we initialize one s object here is equal to qr dot record i so it would be so for first record into the loop it will store into the news now from the first record it will access the field headline so we initialize one string here which name as news headline is equal to from first first record is equal to news dot any then because its return type is xml so query is now in xml format so any then zero zero means the first first field dot inner text so this this one for zero now to get second line second value we have to use one here because this field value will return in a xml format okay so we have obtained this news header and news content now we initialize one list of string as news list is equal to new string now in the news list we add this news okay news header and this one we return now we need to check whether qr is done i mean query is done if not done then we need to perform the while loop again and again okay otherwise it will query more i mean for i mean salesforce perform this query query this partner wsdl perform this query based on a specific batch size maybe 20 or 5000 five, five uh, 1000 or 2000 something like that so if it is more than those records then we will perform this query query more so first it will process those 500 record or 2000 records then it will perform query more again it will perform the query till now 
I mean, one query locator has to be mentioned because till five five thousand it has performed query. Then we after five thousand it will start again query. Then it will continue. Okay. So query service dot query more keyword dot query locator. So query locator is nothing but the pointer. So let's check if we are able to fetch news header or not okay so for that we need to use the same TLS as we are sending the web service request here via partner WSDL so and it return this news news list now we call this method into the main method of this application okay and we need to mention this as static and start the application let's see it is working or not so it's still running so we can see that it accessing the headings okay so it's working fine so it will return list of string with content value uh, sorry with news headings okay now we comment comment out this main method and we go to the project properties then output type is the class library which is dll file and we perform the build of this solution so build is succeeded once build is succeeded it will create one dll file with this code which just has been written okay so we just copy this dll file and go to a specific location create one folder as dll leaf for this csf connect and store it into this location now we are going to use this library file for our main asp project now in this asp.net project we create how we start creating a asp.net project so again go to new project and here we select asp.net web application dotnet framework okay so we name the project as sf connect underscore asp and click ok now we select ASP model as empty. We can create waveform, MVC, model view controller, and all this. So we are just creating one empty project here. So once the project is created, you will see this window. Now go to the solution explorer, cl right click and click on add and waveform select waveform from the list so we provide the waveform name as asf connect okay so it will create one sf connect aspx file here where you can see the code designer code and here you can drag and drop or create your own html file and mention here okay this 
so we are adding one table here in this project once the table is added into the form click on the view code and you will see the CS file with these methods so it will be working in a backend and here if you click on the properties of this table you will see the border style so we set the border style as solid okay and name of this table is table 1 and there are different properties of this table that you can set okay back color background image url border style we set a solid we can set dotted dashed all this so let's see that table has been created or not so we run this application and here it will run here sf connect so it's running in iis express server so you can see that table is available now in the code section page load method which will be loaded when this page will be loaded we create one object so now we are going to call the dll file so we create an array of array object initialize one array object as zero that means the array size is zero because whenever we are going to call one method of the class in the dll file we need to initialize the object so if we want if you want to pass any parameters into that method we need to use this object array for that so currently we are not passing any parameters while calling this method so we just initialize the object size as zero then we use this assembly class from system reflection library so it's a dot net core library out of the box so initialize the variable first then we th this will help to call the dll library okay so we you first initialize the dll library folder here this you can use it in any server url as well okay dll library has been initialized now assim this assembly dot load file then the dll file name i mean dll file full location path location so now this assembly will store the class definition class uh, content of this dll file okay so using this assembly now we can call any method we can uh, access any parameters any variable of this class so to call the method we need to create one variable as type so type is a class which helps to get the class name get the class content okay so it represents the declaration okay so we get the type which will be the namespace dot class name so for that let's open that solution which will help to understand so here is the class and 
this is the namespace and the class class name so both are same so namespace dot this class name okay so it will represent or declare the class name so it's a type class that means we are going to call the class which is a class so something like for example when we are going to create any string variable so string dot variable uh, string space variable name is equal to value so first we declare variable type so it's a type something like that so its type is sf connect so then we create one method info where we mentioned the method that what method we are going to create okay so this method now it's the method info we are providing and here if any parameters that we are going to pass you need to mention here type then second bracket okay so get get method so the second bracket and this as we are not passing any parameter we keep this as null then we need to create one object okay so object obj which will be the constructor constructor call or creating instance okay so it's creating the instance of type this so using this we are going we are creating the object of this class okay now using this object we will create we will call the method so after calling this method the return type is list of string so news feed is equal to list of string then method info dot invoke then object and the parameters this parameters so if this is how we are going to call any method from the library of any dll file okay so once it is executed the list will hold all the news headings now we need to iterate through that list to access the news feed and display in a table okay so for list for running this for loop we create one table row first tr is equal to new table row then we create one table cell tc is equal to new table cell okay so in the tc we add that string so tc dot controls dot add new literal control then the string this so this will add news feed string to the cell okay news feed i all right so one cell is filled with the news feed first cell 
then we add that cell into the tr so tr dot control dot add tc okay so one row with one cell then table one dot this table the name of this table is table one so table one dot rows dot add tr okay now for each and every new speed one table row is created in the table row one cell is available with the new speed now if you we run this program let's see if it is working fine or not yeah it's working fine all right so this is how we access the salesforce data and show this into the local server or any website so this will help to utilize your salesforce data and use it in your website or any web server that you are running in intranet that you want to show the organization data so its utility is huge so if you like this video please subscribe this channel and also click on the like button also share this channel's information to your friends colleagues so that they are also be get benefit from this channel okay now we are getting this error because another program is running in into that salesforce uh, sorry that v bb project this one so we need if we stop this and try to run it again then it will work fine now if we want to show the news content then we need to modify the dll file adding the news content and that array that i we have mentioned about so just use the dll file copy it and paste it here and if you run the run the server again it will access the news content here so these are the content okay now if you modify the content here and save it and refresh this page you can see it has been changed so it's what i said that it has huge utility for your uh, in your website if you want to show organization salesforce or data or any report or anything or you are using intranet and want to access the uh, salesforce data and show in your application then it has huge capability okay so this is the process this is the page where we are calling the dll file uh, here and we are creating type uh, creating a method info and creating instance of the object instance of the class i mean creating object of that class and calling the method invoking the method and adding into the table so this is the code explanation thank you very much for watching this video keep subscribe keep learning and express more